Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be seated? Uh, good morning, everybody. I would really want to thank you uh, for joining us today as we mourn the loss of a fantastic Christian man, Richard Swigler. It means a great deal to us uh, that you're all here today, but particularly to uh, Richard's uh, family, his uh, beautiful, devoted, uh, faithful wife, Angie, and uh, their three kids uh, and their family members. And I want to particularly mention uh, Wesleyan and her hubby Lee and their kids, Bradley and Michaela, uh, Angelo and Claire and uh, Krisha and Ophelia and uh, Juanita and Ash. It means a lot uh, to them that you're here uh, to remember Richard and to give thanks uh, for his uh, life. Uh, that also goes uh, to those of you that are watching online. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, out. Uh, we, uh, Richard had f uh, family and friends all over the world, particularly in South Africa. And uh, we un uh, thank you very much for being a part of it. We understand you can't be here today, but thanks for taking the time to uh, remember him and, and to uh, encourage the family at a time like this. Let me just introduce myself. My name's Tim Booker. I'm the uh, senior minister here of St Luke's uh, Anglican. But I've known the family for some time because I was the assistant minister here from the early noughties, 01 to 06, and uh, first got to meet them then, and then went to Guildford for 15 years, but now I'm back as the senior minister. So it's a very special thing to be able to conduct uh, Richard's funeral today. Now, as we mourn today, we're going to do some very important things. We're going to uh, honour Richard's life by thanking God for him, for thank thanking God for the way in which he contributed uh, to so many lives and didn't waste his life. And we're going to show great love and support uh, for each other uh, during the service, but also afterwards as we gather um, over afternoon tea uh, in the ministry centre. And again, you're all invited to that. But we're also going to spend some time thinking about uh, what happens after death. Too often in the hurly-burly uh, of life, we, stop, we forget to stop and think about why we're here, what happens next, what's our purpose here. Today is a great day to remember that God has given us uh, one life, and at the end of that life, we will all meet God face to face uh, one day. Uh, Richard knew that. Richard knew that each of us has an appointment with God. He was ready for it, and I want you to leave here knowing how to be ready uh, for that meeting. Now, during the service, we're going to read a couple of passages uh, from the Bible, we'll, which will really have that in mind for us. What are we here for? What happens when we meet God? How do we get ready for that? It's a stunning passage from John's Gospel. John was Jesus' our best mate. John writes this. <clears throat> He's quoting from Jesus, a discussion Jesus has with his disciples. Jesus has just told his disciples that he's going ahead of them to Jerusalem to die. They freak out. They don't want him to die. They want him to be the king on earth. Jesus says this to them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Richard knew that. Richard believed that. Trust in Jesus. He is the one who goes ahead of us and prepares a place in heaven for all who believe and follow him. And, that's, and Richard did that. That is exactly why he's there now. He, 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 not a perfect man. Jesus is for sinners like us who need forgiving. He goes ahead of us. And that, that's the assurance we need. You stick with Jesus, believe in him, and heaven will be your home. That brings us real comfort to know, that, uh, know where G uh, Richard is for sure. Knowing that, let's, uh, 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 let, me, let me lead us in prayer at the beginning of our time together this morning. Let's bow our heads. 
Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope of eternal life. Help us to live as those who believe in Jesus, the forgiveness of sins that he offers, and the resurrection to eternal life. Forgive us all our sins and failures. Today, as we gather here to remember Richard, we trust in your deep love and compassion for each one of us. Uphold us by your spirit. In the midst of our grief, enable us to show your compassion and love to each other. And give us, in our sorrow, the calm of your peace. And in time, may our grief give way to joy. We pray this through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing uh, two great songs during this service. And uh, the first one is Abide By Me. If you haven't sung in uh, church for a while, the key is everyone singing loudly together. It goes much better that way. So I invite you to stand. The words will be on the big screen. Let's stand and sing. <clears throat> Please be seated, everybody. We're going to have some uh, eulogies now, and uh, Angelo will kick that off. Uh, and then there'll be a few more after that. And then we'll um, have a wonderful visual uh, tribute to Richard's life. Thanks, Angelo. Richard Twickler. Beloved husband to Angie, father to Wesleyan, myself and Juanita, brother to Daphne, Leon and Terence. A few other titles Dad went by was cousin, uncle, Rick, Ricky, Papa Swig, or just my good friend. Through those friendships, he developed many close relationships over the past 34 years here in Australia. 
Knowing most of the people in Dad's life, they would have definitely given him a superhero-like personality. Some of the words to best describe Dad are thoughtful, kind-hearted, passionate, reliable, stubborn, but also a fighter. Dad's stubborn nature made him the fighter we grow to know him as, and something I will always remember. 13 years ago, Dad suffered a stroke, which put him in ICU for three months. His stubbornness he held, I truly believe, pulled him through that difficult situation. From then on, Dad tried to live a normal life by continuing to drive, travel, and work in his garden. That was a passion of his. If any of you have been to my parents' house, you'd have seen a lot of Dad's work around the house. Although I found it concerning when Mum would call me and tell me he was operating a circular saw and chainsaw. I would like to say thank you to Juanita, Wesleyan and Mum for their effort in bringing this day together in such a short period of time. Thank you to Tim Booker. Thank you to my wife Claire for the flowers and to everyone else who may have had a small hand in today's proceedings. Thank you to all the guests who have travelled from interstate and who have joined us overseas via a video link. Massive thank you to all friends and family who sit before me. I know Dad's infectious personality and kind heart has played a big part in all our lives, whether it be large or small. I wanted to share with you all what Dad really meant to me. As a boy, your dad is your hero and someone you look up to. I can remember as a six-year-old boy back in South Africa, dad would teach me how to block and rub down a car, also how to mask it up ready for paint. He also taught me how to drive a nail into a piece of timber. Some might say, was I too young to be taught these life skills? However, I have benefited from them. Moving on through the years, I guess, over the years I've improved those skills and has made me who I am today. Dad would always put family first. In 1988, Mum and Dad made the huge decision to move to Australia so that we could have a better life. I have my aim for that. They left the country that they grew up in, leaving behind all they knew and all their family for the sole reason of their children having a chance of a life. I admire their courage in doing this, and we as siblings are forever grateful of this sacrifice they made for us. Now, I fast forward our family lives till today and look back at what our family has in Australia. I have my beautiful wife, Claire, my two amazing daughters, Keisha and Ophelia, and also now part of the Lenaham family. Wesleyan, Lee, Bradley, Michaela, and their family, along with the extended Johnson family. Also, more recently, Juanita and Ash and the extended Magnian family. I can also not forget the friends that Dad made along the way. The friendship that Dad created over the years and the stories that he has shared with me 
will always hold a special place in my heart. I would always love having my one-on-one -on -one chats with Dad, paired with an odd whiskey on the rocks. These will be the, the things I'll miss the most. Just before I finish, I just wanted to thank everyone who joined us here today and for the support, the respect and kind words our family have received over the last week. It's been amazing to hear how much respect and love Dad had from all of you. So thank you from all of us. Now I will finish by saying, Dad, I will truly miss you. I'll never forget you. Everything you did for us, but lastly, I'll never forget your last words. Ah, we'll see what happens. I love you, Dad. I'm going to read a couple of messages from South Africa. Um, okay, the first one is, this is a tribute for Richard Swichler, for his brothers Leon and Terence and sister Daphne. It is so unfortunate for us to not personally be here for the send off of our brother, Richard, who suddenly passed away after a long term of illness. We want to thank Angie and children for their unselfish support and loyalty throughout Richard's illness and rehabilitation in hospital. Richard, being that caring person that he was, contacted my sons on a daily basis for progress on my recovery, also after my operation when I was admitted to hospital. Therefore, I, Leon, was in constant contact with Angie regarding his recovery. And when I received a personal call from him about a month ago, my hopes flared up, but unfortunately not for long. We want to remember Richard as our sibling and cherish the memories we as a family had, too numerous to mention. He then got married to his lovely wife Angie and settled with three kids, Wesley, Angela and Monita. The Western world has its own challenges, but he then decided to immigrate and make Australia his new home and in the early years of relocation, he and Angie was in South Africa almost every two years, most probably missing his birthplace, South Africa. But nevertheless, Richard leaves a cloud of memories here in South Africa for many years to come, especially among the hordes of friends that he had. Taking time constraints into consideration, I'll conclude and say, sleep well, my brother, sleep well. You will forever be in our hearts and thoughts and may your loving soul rest peacefully in heaven as we bid our one last goodbye. Rest in peace, Richard. Okay, the next one. We remember Richard. He was hardworking at night and weekends, caring, generous. Richard and Angie hosted us in 2008 when we visited them in Australia. Top athlete at school role model for his children and grandchildren. Loved sport, the outdoors, and had a busy social life. On behalf of our family, I would like to convey our heartfelt sorrow to Angie and their children. Your loss is our loss, your grief is our grief, and Angie, and we express our deepest sympathy to you and your children. Richard was a practical man, a true professional. He loved his work and was successful at it. His passing has brought to an end the suffering he endured during the past few years. He has been relieved of his discomfort and is now in a place where there is no more suffering and no more pain. Yours in spirit, Basil, Florence, Janine, Lloyd and Bianca. Thank you.
To my dear sister Angie, you have lost Richard far too soon. He was a wonderful, kind, and generous human being. I never heard him utter a harsh word to anyone all the time I knew him. He set an excellent example for your three children to follow, Wesleyan, Angelo, Juanita. I know your dad was extremely proud of the way you conducted your lives and making successes of the paths you chose to follow. Angie, you are surrounded by those today who cared deeply for Richard, who supported the family throughout Richard's illness. Bradley, Michaela, Keisha, and Ophelia. Your pa is looking down on you and will always be part of your lives. Remember only the good times with him. We in South Africa are with all of you in spirit. Continue to honor the memory of your loved one with his favorite activity, a barbecue. Richard, we love you and will carry you in our hearts forever. Netta, children Antoinette and Jacques, and grandson Mason. To our beloved Opa, we will miss you so very much. We will miss your laughs and being able to give you a high five. We will miss all the funny stories about Dad. Thank you for being there, such a loving and kind Opa. You will always be so special to us and forever in our hearts. We will think of you always. Together we love you, Opa.
Hope you enjoyed that. It was a great photo tribute, wasn't it? It's great to see the, the life uh, lived out, lived well. I'm going to enjoy another song now. Uh, again, this one's uh, chosen by Angie, one of her favourites. Uh, it is no secret what God can do. And I invite you to stand and sing along with us. Thank you. Please be seated. John's going to come up now and read Psalm 23 for us. It says here, Psalm 23, a passage. But I would like to read the whole psalm. And before I do, before I read a few verses from the Bible, I've, I feel it appropriate to say just the few words in in the remembrance of Richard. Today, every one of us gathered here to celebrate the life of Richard. We also celebrate the beautiful relationship we had with him, both family and friends. And we say to you, Richard, it was such an honor 
and privilege to have known you. We dedicate this poem to Richard. It was composed by David, and it's, it's taken from the book of Psalms entitled, The Lord is My Shepherd. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul, he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the dark valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love has followed me all the day, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On his uh, own deathbed, the famous uh, John Newton, author of Amazing Grace, was in and out of consciousness. At one point he woke up, looked a bit shocked and said, I'm still in the land of the dying, but I shall be in the land of the living soon. This guy had his understanding right and had clearly no fear of death. The author of this psalm is King David, most famous uh, king in the Bible, uh, David and Goliath fame. That guy, he had no fear of death either. Now, why? Well, as we read in the psalm, it's because he had a shepherd to guide him through life and into the next. And when you know this shepherd, you have no need to fear anything. Now, who was this shepherd that David knew personally? Well, we read further that it's the Lord, the God who created him who spoke to David, who revealed himself to David, who made promises uh, to David. And I want you to notice how David describes the Lord our God. He says, he is my shepherd. Notice the personal touch. Yes, God is all-powerful. Yes, God creates the universe effortlessly just by speaking. Let there be light. But he's not just all-powerful, is he? He is the personal God who cares for every person he creates. David was close to this God, knew him personally, and entered into a relationship with him. How, how did he do that? Simply by believing that he was there and that he could be trusted. David lived for God because he knew what God was like he knew what God had done and he knew he could trust God and he knew he needed him he knew he, he was a sinner in need of a savior someone to go ahead of him that's why he calls him my shepherd my shepherd David knows God personally now in verses 2 to 3 we read that this God of ours will make you lie down in green pastures. That means he'll provide for your physical needs. He'll lead you beside quiet waters. He'll provide rest and peace in an anxious world. He'll refresh your soul when you're exhausted from life's demands and worries and griefs. Put them on him and he will help to carry the burden for you. When you know this God, you are never alone. 
and he'll guide you along the right paths of life. You'll never be alone in life. David was regularly hunted uh, by other kings, by people who hated him, but God went ahead of him. He knew of God's presence. God led him through it. Isn't that extraordinary? God wants to lead you through your life as well. He wants you to know that you're not alone. That's how uh, how committed God is to you. Even in the great confusions of life, he will be going ahead of you like that ancient shepherd, making your path straight, being the rock of your salvation. Now, we all know that the world is a dangerous place, seemingly getting a bit more dangerous and confusing, and we can become warriors in life, can't we? Now, these verses don't mean you won't worry, but they'll show you that the one, they'll introduce you to the one that can take that anxiety and worry off of your shoulders. Remember what Jesus himself says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and you will find rest for your souls. And that's why David can then say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now a valley, it's a low place, it's naturally dark, it's full of shadows, soldiers don't go there, they stay on the high ground. It's a great place in the ancient world for the animals to ambush you. The shepherd, if he had to go through the valley, he would be ready for violence. The valley, it's a fitting symbol for death. Now David, he'd been close to death many times and you will walk through dangerous times yourself because we live in a sinful, dangerous world. God doesn't promise you a trouble-free life. We live in a world that is under the curse of sin. That's why there is pain here. There is suffering here. There is sickness here. And people who follow Jesus are not exempt from those things, as Richard well knew. We will face times of illness, and we will die. Now, as David walks through the valley, he says he will not fear evil, not fear death. Yes, it is dark, the world's dangerous, there are difficulties. You can't always see the way ahead, but you don't have to because God has got that planned and sorted. That's why even in the drama, David fears no evil. I will fear no evil for you, God, are with me. David's unafraid because he knows God's going ahead of him. The same goes for us. When you go through the dark valleys of life, remember that God wants to go with you. You don't need need a map. You need him. How does that happen? How do we know we can trust God, have him leading the way? It comes back to something that Jesus himself said. Again, back in John's Gospel. Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now history tells us that Jesus didn't just die, but that he died and rose again. Jesus defeated death. When he dies on that cross, he does what no one else can do for us. He takes the penalty for sin, the death penalty that was on our head, crushing us, filling us with guilt, takes it upon himself. And the moment we believe in him, he removes it. We become forgiven sinners, guilt-free, right with him. He dies, the sin, our death brought on us so that we don't have to die. We can live forever. That's what Jesus offers us. The moment you believe, that's the moment. You can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Richard believed that, had a good, honest, simple faith. Knew he wasn't perfect, knew he needed Jesus. And so where is he now? 
in the house of the Lord forever. And that's the offer Jesus makes to everyone. And I hope that you make uh, take up that offer yourself so that Jesus becomes your shepherd who will lead you into eternal life. What I'm going to do now is um, lead us in a couple of final prayers and then I'll invite you to uh, pray the Lord's Prayer with me at the end of that. The words will appear on the big screen. Let's uh, bow our heads now and I'll lead us uh, in prayer. Thanks. Heavenly Father, you gave us life when you created us and in your saving love you've given us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today we give you thanks for Richard's life and for his faith. And it's in faith and trust we leave him in your keeping. Almighty God, you are the Father of all mercies and the giver of all comfort. Today we ask that you'll deal graciously with those of us who are left to mourn. And we particularly bring before you Angie and her beautiful family that she loves deeply. We, pray, we ask that, dear Lord, you will pour out your comfort and compassion upon them now. May they know of your deep love for that entire family and that casting all of their care on you, that they may know the deep comfort of your love and the incredible salvation that's in Jesus. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to pray the, uh, the Lord's Prayer with me now that will appear on the big screen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the time that we'll spend uh, here now in the service. Um, in a moment, I'll invite you to stand. The family uh, will come down and we'll, uh, they'll lead Richard's uh, coffin out. We'll all exit through the rear doors to pay our final respects. Uh, and then you're all invited to afternoon tea in the ministry centre that's just here. So will you please stand?